This is MRN Crew Call, brought to you by Hercules Tires. There is so much happening in the NASCAR world. There are times when I wake up and I'll bounce online and be like, ay, yeah, yeah, this is going on and the Xfinity series and the playoffs are going on and all the series and this truck team is doing this and there's new cup teams and ah, man, I'll tell you what, it's an exciting time in NASCAR, that's for sure. And we're going to talk about some of that excitement, some of the present excitement as well as some of the future excitement in the Cup Series. I'm Steve Post, Pit Road Reporter for Motor Racing Network, and this is Crew Call presented by Hercules Tires Ride on Our Strength. One of the teams that is in the mix for a championship this year and is expanding into the Cup Series next year is GMS Racing. Up in Statesville, North Carolina, Maury Gallagher's team. They have a couple of truck series drivers still alive with Sheldon Creed and uh, Zane Smith. Uh, they also announced recently that Ty Dillon is going to lead their effort from the driver's seat into the Cup Series. Mike Beam is their 65-year-old president up at GMS Racing. And Mike has been around forever. In fact, he's even a 2018 Catawba County Hall of Famer for his exploits and success in the motorsports world. He has 613 starts as a Cup Series crew chief. He has three wins. He won with Bill Elliott in 1990 at Dover. He won with Bill Elliott in the Southern 500 in 1994. That was working for Junior Johnson. And in a thriller in 2001, he was Ricky Craven's crew chief at Martinsville. Craven and Dale Jarrett just beat the fenders off each other in the last few laps of that race. What a thriller at Martinsville. So Mike Beam, a three-time winner in the Cup Series, 11 wins in Xfinity, 11 wins in the Truck Series. And yes, he is, there's even a Facebook picture of him in victory lane at Hickory with Marty Lindley, one of the greats. So Mike Beam, he's been around and he continues on. He's the president from GMS Racing, and he joins us this time on Crew Call. For decades, Dryden Lubricants has been made in America and made to last, paving the way on our highways, in our fields, and on the production line. Today, Dryden offers a complete line of engine oils, greases, hydraulic and transmission fluids, and diesel exhaust fluid. If you want greater performance and protection for your critical engines and equipment, go to Dryden.com. Dryden, American owned and operated, and a proud supporter of racing and race fans everywhere. Flow Racing is the home of grassroots racing, with over 1,300 races streaming live in 2021. Watch the Lucas Oil Chili Bowl, World 100, Dirt Late Model Dreams, Sweet 16, and much, much more. Subscribe today by going to flowracing.com slash MRN. From sprint cars on dirt to SK Modifieds on pavement, arena cross, drag racing, and everything in between, it's here, live, and on demand. Subscribe today by going to flowracing.com slash MRN. That's F-L-O racing.com forward slash MRN. Joining us here on Crew Call, presented by Hercules Tires, is Mike Beam. Hello, Mike. Welcome into Crew Call. Hey, buddy. How you doing? I'm doing good. How about you, Mike? I, I, I watch what's going on at GMS. I said, Mike Beam looks like he might be a busy man up there. Oh, yeah. Definitely busy trying to, you know, work on our cup program get all that stuff you know locked down continue the charter saga of course uh yeah, you know and the truck trying to you know get that you know all buttoned down and just uh yeah i've got our arca deal uh signed with daniel die and got a couple trucks signed so we're good there got ties signed and so yeah so yeah it's a lot going on I can imagine. I, I can only imagine that there is so much happening with it. Mike, I, I actually want to talk about all of those programs, the, the okay. ARCA program, the truck program, and the Cup Series, but kind of want to start talking with you. I was I was doing some research, and in 1981, you had your first crew chief gig. That's 40 years ago with yeah. Kyle Petty over at Richard Petty Motorsports. Man, what a ride. Um, how, how, how have you survived so long in this sport? <laughs> Oh, wow. You know, I've been very blessed. You know, my wife and I have been married 43 years. And, you know, one thing that, you know, that people, I've re I guess I've just, I hadn't forgot about it. But so my very first cup race I ever went to was with Morgan Shepard in 81. We sat on the pole at Richmond. 
you know, that's the first cup race. And we didn't have a clue what we were doing. I didn't. And the guys. But anyway, so then I left to go to the petties. But, you know, just, uh, you know, yeah, I've been a NASCAR member since 1972, I believe. 73. I think the license were 30 bucks or I forget. Anyway, it's a lot of money. But so just, you know, Steve, I just love it. It's all I want to do. I mean, I'm one of the very blessed people that knew what I wanted to do in high school, right? Because my neighbors race and, you know, going to Hickory Speedway, you know, working in the concession stands, you know, 10 years old, you know, to get, be around it and stuff. So, uh, I mean, it's, yeah, it's been quite a journey. Been blessed to meet a lot of nice people, have some really good owners and drivers and made a lot of good friends. And so, yeah, it's worked out well. I, I can't time. imagine, I, I was going to ask you how much has it changed? I almost want to ask is, are there, what, what has there, has, has there been constants that stayed the same? I guess is probably a better question because it seems like virtually everything has changed in the sport. Well, it's definitely changed. You know, money always changes things, right? Yeah. You know, in, uh, you know, as we evolve, the sport has, you know, it's taking more people because, you know, NASCAR had to ramp up their officiating because there was more cheaters like us, of course. So they tried to make it a fair game. And so then it just takes more people. And, you know, so, uh I was telling our guys in the shop the other day, I was talking about this, this new cup car. So I was here in 81 when we went from the 115 car to the 110 car and stuff like that, right? Went to the small yeah. car. And we thought we thought our world had really, you know, <clears throat> you know, changed a lot, but we dealt with it. Then we went to the COT car, you know, and so it's like, uh seen a lot of change you know uh like it's just got to be big business right i mean you know back then we raced and you just raced and it just always worked out and you know the people i remember the king having stp and you know that was a big deal and then if you go look at it it wasn't a lot of money in today's world but you know it was and then you know eddie wood and them had pure later you know pierce and them so you know the change has just been takes more people because i was kyle's crew chief i got a picture of somebody took a picture i was kyle's crew chief in 81 but i was the engine tuner on richard's car you know so you know it's uh but i was kyle's crew chief too so i was engine tuner on both those cars kyle's crew chief Plus, I was the tire guy, right, in the crew chief. We had three people. Glover was there, Tony, of course, yeah. and three of us. You, 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 and back then, you even changed engines, you know. And so it's like we had three people. Kyle would get inside the car, take the shifter off and stuff, and then you just kind of met in the middle, and that's just the way it worked out. But gosh, that's what, you know, it's weird because I never remember eating – lunch at a racetrack for years i don't ever remember that right i just don't remember that i don't ever you know people and now they bring chefs and catering and you know or they do all that stuff and it's like i just don't ever remember for 10 15 years eating anything at the racetrack we always just worked you know and you know we drove everywhere we i still remember leaving level cross at six o'clock on thursday night driving all night to get to Michigan you get there when the gates open and work all day and then you would drive home after Michigan and you would you know you would go to work so it's uh yeah I had this conversation the other day with someone like you know we never knew what days off were going to going to the Daytona race 4th July was a big deal because you had a couple days right you worked hard to you took your family you got the you know, be a normal person. You know, the race started at 10 o'clock and, you know, you back at the beach at two or three and, you know, you got to spend some time with your family. But, you know, it's, uh, I, you know, we used to fight over the window seat in the tow truck. Now people fight over the window seat on airplanes, right? So it's just, you know, it's, 
I don't think it's hard anymore. Like I, these, those guys that work for me at GMS, they know that I don't have any mercy on that stuff. You know, I don't have patience for it either. So, you know, it's, it's kind of ironic because when people start complaining about stuff, they know they don't need to come to me because I'm going to just, yeah, right. Seriously. (laughs) That's that's what you got to gripe about. So anyway, it's kind of yeah, everybody piling a fifteen passenger van, and you know, just uh, it's just what we did. We had to do it, and I was working for the best team there was. You know, you know, with the petties and stuff. But everybody just this. It's kind of like I, you know, when I was growing up, my dad was a bricklayer, my mother worked in hosiery mill and stuff in Hickory there, and you know, we 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 weren't. You know, we weren't poor, but we didn't, you know, you just, but all my friends, we didn't know we didn't have anything, right? I mean, you know, just, you know, and that's just the way it was. And then racing is the same way, but uh, yeah, I've been very blessed, you know, with some good owners, you know, working for Junior and, you know, just a lot of them. And yeah, but it's, you know, how much has changed since you've been in the sport here. Wow. Yeah. I do, I do love your, your, wing nation show that's pretty cool i always watch that i record it i get to watch it so it's pretty cool to do that i, I enjoy the sprint car stuff thanks we have a ball with that we really you do yeah. yeah yeah it's 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 a fun segment of the sport so mike how do you balance it because i i understand you're a you're an 80s 90s guy mm-hmm. no you know no lunch at the racetrack you've got to change engines between practice and qualifying and the race and everything like that but the reality of it is, is the culture is a lot different now. So do you have to temper your, I mean, I, I get, don't come to me and whine about long hours, but there's got to be a tempering of that because, because the society has changed. This has really nothing to do with yeah. NASCAR, but society exactly. has changed. Oh yeah. I'm a HR nightmare sometimes, to be honest yeah. with you about that stuff, but you balance it, you know, you have, you know, being around the sport for so long and didn't you know we got really good people up here at gms and stuff and they keep me they keep the management they keep me in line a lot which is a challenge you know sometimes because when we lose or when we give we don't execute and stuff like that right you know and so it's definitely uh you know uh, and having young guys drive for you or young athletes, everybody you want to put it, but you know, having kids and having grandkids, it's kind of, you know, and as you get older, you say, wow, does that really make a difference? Right. Or, you know, the things you used to fight for, you know, really is it really in the grand scheme of things, does it really matter? So I've done very well of uh, just saying, well, that's, that's not going to make us any better, but you know, it's like, trying just so much you know and, and i tell it's uh it's a with maury being three hours behind so you know you know his day's still going at five or six o'clock well that's nine o'clock here right <laughs> you know so it's uh sometimes that's challenging of course but you know it's uh very blessed at my end of my career that i have an owner like him and he's let me build gms like we have no doubt no doubt. Let's talk about building GMS. You yeah. guys have been working at this for quite some time. And a couple yeah. of weeks ago, you announced the next step of GMS, which has not been a secret that you guys have wanted to do yeah. it. Cup series racing. Why now? What's, 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 what's the, what, what was the appeal to pull the trigger on this thing at this point? Well, it's definitely the new car, you know, uh, is, I mean, we've been, you know, we've looked at getting into this for a couple of years. You know, we went out to Furniture Row and we was looking at buying Furniture Row a couple of years ago when Barney w- was getting out. But, you know, uh, we talked a lot about it. And then, you know, then we, we found out about this new car coming and I just wouldn't make the investment, you know, like so many cup owners have now. They have all these cars. I just was going, I wasn't going to make the investment with the inventory, you know, so I didn't do it. But, you know, the whole, this whole thing come about, you know, with General Motors, you know, been talking to Eric Warren and Pat, you know, quite a bit on it. And uh, then got with Ty and we started talking a little bit, then got with Richard and it just kind of all fell into place, really. You know, it's time for us to go to the next level because, yeah, we've raced the truck, you know, I've been there six years and, you know, I don't 
you know, we've won 40 races or something, a couple of championships. And I'll be honest with you, it's getting, it's getting pretty tough to make that a business model, the truck, you know, stuff, you know, just because the way it is, you know, with the point fund TV share, you know, the, yeah, so there's just a lot of, it's a business decision for us to, because my fate, my I tell Maury, as long as we keep truck racing, this will be a, a big hobby. It'll never be a business, you know, just because it just costs so much now to do it, you know, and I had to look at what's best for GMS's future. And this was the start of it. You know, we'll still race trucks. We love trucks and, you know, being the number one GM team and they're, you know, we couldn't do it without their support. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's what led to the decision. It's just like anything else. It's about the money, right? It's the revenue stream. And that's where we're at. No. Yeah. You know, and, and obviously you you mentioned right at the top the charter challenges, and I don't, I don't even understand that. I don't I don't get into that. But you also mentioned the car as part of the reason. But yes, the the alliances as well. Uh, when you talk about Richard Childress, when you talk about General Motors and your partnership in the Truck Series and taking that to the Cup Series, th- that to me has got to be a, a, a critical part of this as you guys yes. take the next step as well. Definitely. I mean, you know, uh, General Motors. I mean, they're a big part of this for sure. You know, in Ty, you know, I, I've known Ty for a long time, you, you know, in, in Austin and, you know, just, uh, it's kind of wrong. Ty drove our truck. He won the first pole for us and Austin won the first race for us in our trucks, you know, so, so you know, it's quite a bit of history there. Of course, Mike and Tina, and, you know, RC, I'm friends with him. I've been, well, for a long time, right after being in the cup garage for years and he's always, you know, did me right. And so, you know, it's just great. It just seemed like, like Maury, he says, it's our moment in time here, you know, and that's the way we're approaching it. Uh, But, you know, I will say I have done things in my career that I thought was really hard, but this charter stuff is probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to deal with. Really? It seems to be just, you know, and I get it. I understand, you know, um, well, I mean, I hope that they can expand the field of, you know, to 40 charters in a couple of years, you know, when the TV package comes out and, you know, just to bring new people in. But, you know, it's, it's just hard. And I understand it. I understand, you know, the what people do and stuff. But, you know, it's kind of wrong. See, nobody wants to get out, really. Yeah. You know, they don't. And I get it. I understand that because I'm 65 and I don't want to get out. Right. I wish I was 40, you know. In some ways, yeah, but you you don't because just like you, I mean, it's you know it, it's it's like a drug or an itch. You know, it's just you just can't get rid of sometimes. You know, and you some days you you think you could, then you realize you're very blessed to be able to do this, right? I mean, to work on race cars and go to races, and you know, so many people wish they could do this, right? So we're very blessed, you know, to be able to be involved in it. So it'll work out just, you know, just, uh, you know, we're, we're making attorneys pretty rich right now. It seems like, so, you know, I told our attorney, I better not see him driving a new Mercedes cause you know, I'm going to paint that sucker orange and put GMS on it. Cause you know, just kidding him. But you know, it's, it's, it's a learning experience for me, you know, as a old crew chief, you know, in the business side of it, and Maury, he's taught me a lot, you know, on the business side of it, that, um, I wish I'd have known 15, 10 years, 20 years ago, uh, how I would handle it, you know? So, but anyway, it's, uh, it's definitely a challenge. It is. When you get a driver like Ty that has such a rich history in the sport and yet finds himself kind of on the outside of the sport looking in, um, and, and, and I believe Ty is, I think he's really got a lot of talent. That's what I've seen. Um, it's, it's, it's going to be fun having a hungry race car driver that wants to scratch and claws way back in. I, would I mean, exactly. You hit the nail on the head. I looked at it with, you know, people and Ty fit the, the, the mold perfect for what we're trying. I mean, he's hungry. He wants to race on Sundays and he has embraced this. I'm so proud of Ty. And, you know, he's turned his life around and, you know, uh, a lot of ways is, grown up with his two kids, you know, and Haley, they just got a nice family. And, 
so it's just honestly it was a perfect perfect match for us we, you know we're very very lucky to have him you know and and he is he has been involved here with you know the crew chief stuff that we'll hopefully we'll announce here pretty soon and just a lot of stuff that he brings to the table yeah you know, he's if you think about it, Ty, he's raised for a long time, right? And he's so honest and open about all the mistakes he made before, and he's going to work hard to make sure he doesn't do it again. And like I told Ty, you know, he's a partner in this. And he's, yeah, his main job is to be a race car driver. But, you know, we want to do this for a long time. And, you know, more he's always, his per, you know, he his deal is like, you know, he just, financially makes a commitment to you and it's up to you to make it grow well we've been like i said we've been blessed with gms to be successful so you know now he he looks at it okay well you and ty you know okay y'all need to grow this and he leaves it up to us to do it it's neat fun stuff that's for sure yeah. so you guys are building a cup program for 2022 you're doing this while running for a truck series championship. You still have oh, yeah. two uh, two guys going with Zane Smith and Sheldon Creed, and uh, you know how do you, how do you, how do you blend and balance all of that together, and yet keep the shop floor rolling along up there? Well, you know, like I, like I say, Steve, we got some good people. Tom Ackerman, them, you know, they look they're looking after the truck stuff, you know, and uh, yeah, it's we're, we're we're loading all the guns for Martinsville. I think you know we're pretty much set for Phoenix if we can get there. You know, we're uh, but really good people, you know, Joey Cohen and Chad Norris, they're working on the Cub stuff, you know, we've hired some really good people. And, you know, so it's, it's just about having, I mean, when you have people, if it, you know, people come to GMS, I mean, there's a hundred people work there, you know, so it's like, we have the people, our fab shop, you know, second to none. And, you know, we, so anyway, it is, some days it's hard, you know, uh, it, it's always a balance, right? Because like you said, you know, but you meet a lot, you talk a lot of people and, you know, we got a pretty good schedule of meetings and stuff, you know, too. But Ackerman, Tom, he does, he's been with us five years now and he's been a big part of our success in the trucks. And, you know, then you throw Joey Cohen, you know, and, and Chad Norris, both those guys work for us for quite a while. And they, they understand the mission and our business model. So I just kind of, I just sit back and bitch, but yeah, I don't think they listen, you know, just, <laughs> but the, you know, it's, but it's fun to watch, you know, and, and you know, uh, uh, my job is to provide them with the tools to be successful. Right. You, know, you, you go away from race. Yeah. You know, I've worked for enough race teams that, uh, I work for junior Johnson in, he taught me a lot. He taught me about how to treat people and how to build a team. I work for other people and I go, you know, if I ever get in that position, I'm not going to be that way or do that, you know? So it's, uh, you know, we're, we don't have a lot of turnover, you know, and it seems like, but it's, it's hard because, you know, in the world you live in now, people have vacation days and personal dates, right? And I don't understand that, but I get it. Like, you know, you used to, you know, take the week off of Thanksgiving and you take a couple of days of Christmas. And I still remember working at the Petty's New Year's Day, right? Yeah, you know, I still, yeah, so I still remember really working Christmas Eve and uh, just, so it's like, uh, they don't even share with me when people take off because I'm not the person to, that they need to tell that to <laughs> you know it's like maternity leave right seriously man i mean you know yeah. Yeah. our middle daughter emily was born on valentine's day thursday morning at five o'clock i thought it's a wake-up call i was in daytona and was fixed to run the qualifying race right yeah. I mean, you know so yeah you just you know then we got my you got my maternity yeah. leave for and i go or or paternity or whatever you want to call it like yeah yeah exactly okay. I get it. I get it. But, you know, personal days and different world. holidays and it's like, you know, just so it's a chat. That's a big challenge for me. But, you know, I just go lock myself in my office and just 
forget yeah. about it. <laughs> as, long as, as, as long as you understand it, you got the people around it to make sure you don't, uh, you, 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 yeah. you keep HR, you keep HR happy. Yeah, I guess yeah. A- I'm an HR nightmare. Yeah, I can be. Yeah, just like, yeah. So anyway, it's fun. So it's good. Yeah. Finally, you mentioned also you were able to get the ARCA program wrapped up. Daniel yep. Dye, what a great young racer. I've had a chance to meet him over the last few years. <laughs> yeah. why, why do you, what, with all of this on the plate, why do you guys keep an ARCA program going as well? What's all, what's the, what's the rationale and reasoning there? Well, you know, we, we have our driver's age development program with General Motors and EO and Junior Motorsports, you know, and the whole idea is to, you know, find the talent, feed them through, you know, start with the ARCA you know, in the short track stuff, you know, and then ho- hope they come drive a truck, you know, it's kind of like what Justin Haley drove her truck for us and he went up to college, you know, and did well. Then you take Sam Mayer, yeah, you know, he drove our ARC car and then you know, they chose any one a truck race. Right. Yeah. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's fun to watch. I mean, Daniel went in the race at Berlin, you know, was, very special because you see the parents and all the hard work and dedication they put in to get their kids to that level and they win a you know a national touring race so a lot of it is just uh for us to feed the system that we're trying to you know keep going with the general motors drivers Mm -hmm. and you know it's just fun to those cats, I mean, they they get after it. Daniel, he's so talented, you know. And that Arca race, those guys are brutal. I mean, they're brutal, you know. And it's uh, but it's fun to watch them progress and mature, you know, as a driver. And Daniel's come a long way. And it's like, you know, it's pretty much a no brainer for us. I mean, we had to work through some things because you saw what Arca rules are going to be. But we're we're very excited about that. We're very excited. Grant's coming back in finger, you know. He's coming back home, so we're really happy about that and jack wood's coming back you know and he's heavily involved with the josh wise you know and so working on some other truck stuff that hopefully the next you know couple of days will uh, materialize here nice. you know, it, uh, nice. yeah a lot going on for sure yeah, we, we started this conversation and one of the early things you talk about a 1981 kyle petty driving for his driving for his dad's race team this yeah. development this young talent we have I mean, how it's amazing to me. Yeah. I, I was out, hey, Mike, I was out Saturday at Bobby Labonte's quarter midget track, and there was 107 kids racing quarter midgets in Salisbury, North Carolina on a really? Saturday afternoon. The young talent in this sport, I can't imagine these young kids trying to navigate the system. Yeah, and, and you go over to Millbridge, right? That's yeah, crazy. Absolutely. I mean, it's that is crazy that, you know, to, I mean, these these kids are so darn good. It's like Daniel. I mean, you know, like he and Sam. I mean, you know, it's and you know, there's a young man, William Solick, that's coming through the system. You know, hopefully, you know, you know, Lauren Rainier and you know, nice family, and you know, they've been driving Setzer's car. You know, Dennis and Brandon's car. That's definitely a lot of talent there. You know, that hopefully we look forward to getting the system and run some K N East races. You know, in you know, like Daniel, he turns 18 in December, so he'll be able to go to the mile and a half stuff, right? And that's the way this needs to progress to to be able to do that, you know. And, and then Solik, hopefully we can get him and he can run the short track for a year or two, you know, and progress through the system and other people too, you know. But, Jim, they're, they're committed to the driver development program, Eric and him, and Eric Warren and Pat. So, you know, they're good partners. And then, you know, you take Dale Jr. and Joe Mass. I mean, because, you know, Dale, he, you know, like what he's doing for Josh. I mean, that's awesome. Yeah, it's great to see that. And, you know, it's like, you know, Dale's old man. He helped more people than, you know, you know, than people know. I mean, uh, I remember Dale Jarrett wrecking a car, why not destroy it? And Dale Sr. just gave him, gave him a car and you know dale couldn't really pay for it the way he could i guess but i don't really know the whole story but he dale senior just said hey take and run it you can pay me whenever right i mean that's what dale senior did so it's it's uh it's but the, for us the driver it's just my way to give back a little bit to the people sure. you know to uh, the sport and stuff and um it's you know 
it's definitely a challenge sometimes, but you know, it's, uh, I don't have any boys, right? I've got three daughters and four granddaughters. I finally got a little boy, you know, Gavin, he's about two. So, you know, but, um, these kids, I think, oh gosh, I mean, like Daniel Dye, he's only five years older than my granddaughter and stuff. So, you know, it's, uh, but anyway, that's, it's fun to watch the progression there. Really, truly is fun to watch. What a seat, what a ride you've had. Oh, all very those years, cool. And it continues on, man. I'll tell you what, love, uh, yeah. love, love, love your journey, love your trip and, uh, and your passion for it. I really I do. Appreciate I appreciate you that. taking some time and joining us here on crew call today. Yeah, man. I appreciate it, Steve. Thank you for everything. And you have a great day. Okay. You got team president, GMS racing, Mike Beam joining us here on crew call citywide to countryside, whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules has the value, selection, and industry-leading warranty to get you there no matter where the road takes you. Go to HerculesTires.com. There you can find the nearest authorized Hercules retail location to you. Plus, you can use the tire tracker to find out which Hercules tire fits your vehicle the best. That's HerculesTires.com. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Sir! Are you aware you were going 40 miles an hour? This is a residential area. Sure, but I'm on my lawnmower. Wait, am I getting a ticket? No, I've just never seen anyone top nine miles an hour on one of those bad boys. And mow their entire lawn in 30 seconds? What got into you? Well, it did fuel up at Sunoco this morning. At Sunoco, we know how to fuel peak performance. We've been doing it for American racing for over 50 years. Fuel your best. Ford has put the stock back in stock car, and now you can register for your chance to be Ford Performance's VIP guest and watch the NASCAR Next Gen Mustang hit the track for the first time in 2022. One grand prize winner and their guest will receive a trip for two to Daytona Beach with VIP access. Ford Performance driver meet and greets, round trip airfare, and more. Register now through November 7th at FordNextGen.com. That's FordNextGen.com. So a lot of excitement in the NASCAR world as we all look to the future and a lot of excitement in the Ford Motor Company as they look forward to the future as well. Ford is making a $22 billion investment into electrification through 2025. Now, production of these new vehicles is taking place worldwide, including four plants right here in North Carolina, uh, North America, that is. There's a new Rogue Electric Vehicle Center in Michigan. That's one of those plants, and this plant sounds amazing. Ford has invested, or is investing, $700 million into that complex. They're adding 500 jobs. The new advanced sustainable technology is right there to build the Ford F-150 Lightning as well as the Ford F-150 Power Boost Hybrids. You can find out more about Ford's electrified vehicles by going to ford.com and, and click on the electrification tab. Again, that's ford.com. Electrification is where you can look uh, to find all of their new electrical uh, electric vehicles. And while they're on the Ford site, check out the whole new breed of pony from Ford, the all-electric Mustang Mach-E GT Performance Edition. This thing earns every inch of its GT badge you can see the new Mustang and all of the new Ford vehicles. It's www.ford.com. The Electrified tab is where you look for all of the great Ford vehicles. Motor Racing Network is going to be busy this weekend. We are out at Kansas Speedway, and we have got some great racing as we kick off the next race in this round of playoffs. The Cup Series, Kyle Larson locked into the championship round with that win at Texas. Let's just be honest. Nobody else is safe. Some guys are in better shape than others, but nobody is safe on this one. And Kansas has historically been a little bit of a topsy-turvy journey for some of the teams. So it is going to be fun to see. When we look at the Xfinity Series, John Hunter Nemechek, a non-Xfinity Series playoff driver, won the race at Texas. So everybody is alive and fighting. When we look at the Xfinity Series, A.J. Allmendinger and his team are leading the charge 30 points to the good, but I am telling you, nobody is safe when we look at the next two races with the Cup Series and with the Xfinity Series. Kansas this weekend, 
Martinsville next weekend, where we will also be joined by the Truck Series. Motor Racing Network is busy this weekend, 2.30 in the afternoon, Eastern time on Saturday. It is the Kansas Lottery 300 for the Xfinity Series. And then in the evening, the nightcap, we will wrap down the Arkham Menard Series. Ty Gibbs looking to claim that championship with the Reese's 150. That's at 7 o'clock Eastern time. And then on Sunday afternoon, the Cup Series, 2 o'clock, the Hollywood Casino 400 will round out the weekend in Kansas. Always fun to go to Kansas. Can't wait to be out there. And Motor Racing Network has you covered from green flag to checkered flag all weekend long. You can follow along and get that schedule at MRN.com. Punch on our schedule tab there. And you can even set reminders to your phone, to your device, to know every time MRN is on the air. We appreciate Mike Beam, president up at GMS Racing, for joining us. More important, though, than all of that, Thank you for joining us here on Crew Call, presented by Hercules Tires, right on our strength.